Bhutan is known for its happiness. That's the one thing that people think of when they think of Bhutan, that their main export is happiness. So can you explain to me a little bit about what gross national happiness entails and what the four pillars are in detail? Uh, the gross national happiness, it was introduced by uh, the fourth king, Jikmi uh, Singye Wangchuk. And uh, he announced to the public that uh, gross national happiness is more important than the gross domestic product. Uh, if the people are happy, naturally, when the time goes on, the gross domestic product will also increase, but very slowly. And the four main pillars, like firstly, it's to preserve the cultural and tradition. And from the preservation of cultural and tradition, how one can bring like happiness to the people, Looking at the, the architecture of the traditional Bhutanese house, the paintings, which uh, symbolizes the, the, the name or uh, yeah, the name of the country, Bhutan. And also the, we have like many traditional games, which example, I would say the archery. And in terms of archery, uh, everyone like should wear uh, the traditional dress uh, or the national dress, which for men it's called go, and for women it's called kira. But women doesn't play, uh, play archery; it's only the men who plays archery. Would you say that many other countries or cultures have lost that tradition because of such rapid? economic growth? I would say yes, uh, that uh, they probably they only depend on, they focus more on the gross domestic product mm. and uh, the happiness of the people. Mm. And the second is uh, to conserve the environment. For example, like uh, in Bhutan, we have like few of the reserve areas, uh, which we call it as the national uh, park and we this uh, area it's restricted for people to uh, harm any of the environment there just it's a space especially for the animals like wild animals uh, the, the glacier mountains like if we allow or if the government allow the foreigners to climb then uh, there would be many foreigners who want to come to climb that mountain. But if we allow them, then they can impure that mountain, which the glacier uh, is the one which we depend on drinking uh, for the people. If that is impure and if people continue drinking, they would cause like many problems like disease. And uh, secondly, is like we believe that this holy, uh, this mountains are holy mountains and sacred, so we should respect. Absolutely. In return, like the nature can respect the people. Absolutely. So <clears throat> the third is uh, in the country uh, there should be a good government. <clears throat> the government should uh, also look. Uh, for the country and uh, for the people and for the king. And uh, the government uh, now has been changed from 2008, from monarchy to constitutional democracy. And in the government, there should not be like corruption, because corruption is the worst thing which harms uh, not only the country, but also to the people. So <clears throat> now the fourth pillar uh, is to have the equitable uh, social and economic development. And uh, in terms of the economic, uh, I would say like uh, we do have a very 
uh, big hydro plants uh, where we export to India and uh, it's our first revenue income. And uh, secondly, we have uh, tourism as the second revenue income. And thirdly, uh, it's probably the agriculture where we uh, produce like uh, potatoes, apples and oranges and we export them to Bangladesh, to India. So <clears throat> Bhutan also has to be self-sufficient in terms of the economy. That's why like uh, the tourism example I would give is uh, we limit the number of tourists but uh, we just increase by uh, the tariff that they pay every, uh, every day that they come to Bhutan. So, which is beneficial for the for the country's economic, and also it links with uh, the environment. So, and I think that increasing the tariff is probably one of the best things Bhutan has done. Um, I was under the impression that there was a capacity for the amount of tourists allowed in per year. And another thing I've noticed is that for those who do come to Bhutan, it's all guided you don't have a chance to wander off and go stay somewhere else or you've in a way sacrificed the freedom of the travelers to preserve the environment and culture uh why like uh, every tourist has to come through a travel agent and uh, always uh, they're always guided by a guide and a driver it's the uh, first thing is to make sure that the tourists it's informed with the right information about Bhutan. Second thing it's for the safety of the traveler. So once we receive a client from the airport or a foreigner or tourist from the airport, till we uh, send them back, we should give them more information and then let them go back happy and have a safe travel in the country. So do you think that there is, um, in terms of economy, do you think that there is a discrepancy between the rich and the poor? You know, in some countries the rich are very rich, the poor are very poor. The discrepancy is the barbaric, really. So how would you say the condition is like in Bhutan? Uh, in Bhutan, uh, the Poverty problem, it's, uh, I would say, uh, nil. The rich are not very rich. The poor are not very poor. Uh, the poor one, how do they survive? It's through agriculture. I think that the four pillars of gross national happiness is something that the rest of the world should not only learn from, but should maybe also adopt. However, maybe some countries are too far down the gross domestic product path that it's hard to turn back. So, thank you, Quinzan. Oh, you're welcome.